covenant of Abraham and Sarah with God really resonates with me. I had no idea of all the world trauma that was going to happen in the next, last few weeks, especially the murder of 17 people in and near a school in Parkland, Florida. That has changed the way I look at these lessons, but only a little bit. I was still happy to keep the title that Pastor Craig had chosen in this series, talking about, through, about covenant through our connections with social media. The title is Relationship Status. It's complicated. It still fits because all of the relationships that we're looking at, from Abraham and Sarah, to Peter and Jesus, to our own place in God's kingdom, are at best very complicated. And no, I'm not mispronouncing a word. I really mean God's kingdom, not kingdom. The grace of God has made us all God's beloved children. Brothers and sisters, we are, in the words of the southern half of my home state of Missouri, kin to each other. That kinship started a long time ago, back as far as Abraham. To use some fancy theology language, which I usually stay away from, all three of the monotheistic re religions, those of us that believe in one God, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, call ourselves children of Abraham. We believe that 2,000 years before Jesus, in the Bronze Age, God called a man named Abram, a wanderer from the country of Ur, and Abram listened. He gave up everything he knew to follow this one God. He wasn't the most perfect guy all the time. We can read his story in the Old Testament and know that he messed up fairly often, but for the most part, he listened to God, and he believed in God's covenant with him, that he would be the father of nations. Now, when Abram listened to God that first time, not today's lesson, but before, when God spoke to him, he was 75 years old. By the time today's part of the story comes about, Abram had been following God for 24 years. Isaac is still only a promise, while God is telling him to look up and know that he will have as many descendants as the stars he sees in the sky. 2,000 years after Abraham, Paul reminds us of this, calling Abraham the father of us all through faith. He hoped against hope for the promise of God, and it came to him. And through him come nations full of people who believe in a single God. Above all the other deities and idols out there, different not only in oneness, but because this God just didn't walk away after creating the world. This God didn't stop caring for people when they didn't turn out quite the way that God had planned. But over and over again, God makes covenant with us, God, covenant based on caring and love and faith. This God, our God, is crazy mad in love with all creation and keeps reaching out over and over, even doing the unthinkable and taking on human form to redeem us. When Jesus, in that human form, starts telling his disciples what will happen and have to happen for that redemption to come about, Peter just isn't having any of it. Peter, like the rest of the Jewish nation at that time, had ideas about what a Messiah was supposed to be like. And his idea of the Messiah wasn't somebody who was going to go quietly to humiliation and torture and death. He expected an armed hero on a steed leading a charge. And Jesus tells him that is not what he's about. He has some harsh words for Peter and the disciples and the crowd following him that day. They're the same words he's been saying all along but now in even stronger form. He calls them to follow him, to take up their cross, and to let go of the life they've been living, to give it up. In the time right before this, they've seen him feed thousands of people, twice. He's cast out demons. He's healed the deaf, the blind, and ironically, people still aren't hearing or seeing him. We still have problems hearing and seeing him, and we definitely aren't hearing and seeing each other very clearly. Not that this is anything new. When Sarah, at 90, heard God's message that she would bear a child, 
She laughed so hard she nearly fell over. Peter called Jesus Messiah. And then in today's lesson, just a little while after that, is arguing with him about what that messiahship should look like. It took a disaster on the road to Damascus and a direct message for Paul to listen to God. We know listening to God is hard, especially when we already know that what God is calling us to do doesn't match up with what we're already doing. I don't like the thought of giving up my comfortable life to follow Jesus and really, really listen to him. If I do that, I've got to listen to everything he says about faith and feeding the poor and loving not just my friends and neighbors, but people I don't get along with, even my enemies. I've got to hold on to God's promises like I really believe them and live like that. That's why I like the title today, Relationship Status, It's Complicated. On Transfiguration Sunday, we heard God's message to Peter and John and James. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Our themes for Lent are covenant and communication, remembering the promises that God makes and listening to God and each other. Listening to each other, it's hard. One of the other things that's been the most difficult for me in the last few weeks is that we all seem to have strong opinions on how to solve the world's problems, especially the huge ones, like school shootings. But those opinions are very different from each other, and we're not listening to each other. They're not just about one single thing or another. There's not one simple solution. It's complicated. But until we start listening to each other about these solutions, we aren't going to get much done. On Tuesdays during our Lenten luncheons, we're praying together, we're talking about more connection and covenant, we're having lunch, and we're watch watching a documentary in pieces called No Joke about three men who consider themselves God's children through Abraham. They're an evangelical pastor, an imam, and a rabbi and they've been talking and listening and being together for years. The title comes out of the fact that one day when they were all over at one of their houses, and actually they're in Peoria, so they were watching a Cardinal baseball game on TV, sitting together, just being friends. One of the wives walked in and said, wow, an imam, a rabbi, and a preacher. This looks like the setup for a great joke, except it's no joke. So they gave her credit for that and they called their project that. They've been together for more than five years and they've done some big things together besides the No Joke Project, including something called Peace for Peoria that brought thousands of people together to learn from each other and learn how to get along. The documentary filmmaker has something called The Three Practices that outlines how they listen to each other. They are, I'll practice being unusually interested in others. I'll practice staying in the room with difference. And I'll stop comparing my best with your worst. You've got to think these are not easy things. They require work and caring and faith. I really enjoyed watching this documentary and watching these three leaders of congregations do the hard work of listening to each other, of really loving each other while still disagreeing on some big points. One thing they all do agree on is that God is with them in this struggle. God is with us in our struggles and joys wherever we are. God keeps God's promises and does not desert us no matter where we go. This week, I would like to challenge you to try at least one of these three practices with someone. To be unusually interested in somebody else, to stay in the room with difference, or to keep from comparing your best to someone else's worst. They're all tough things, but we know we have the promises of a big God, a God who loves us and cares for us and about us a God who is everywhere and through Jesus has experienced every pain, every sorrow, 
and every joy that we can go through in life or even imagine. Yeah, life is complicated, but we have a God who walks through the complication with us every time. And that is the uncomplicated good news. Amen.